The guidelines for securing sustainable small-scale fisheries are an international set of agreements on how to manage and develop small-scale fisheries. These guidelines were developed through a participatory process involving fishers and other stakeholders in many different regions. The guidelines speak to everyone, including states, civil society, fishing communities and their organizations and business. International human rights lie at the heart of the guidelines. This means that the governance and management of small-scale fisheries needs to ensure that all activities respect and protect everyone's human rights. This includes the fisher folks' right to equality, respect for culture, the rights of women and indigenous peoples, the right to participate and be consulted in decision-making and the right to transparent, accountable management. As such, small-scale fishers must be able to participate in the implementation of the guidelines. The guidelines recognize that responsible fisheries management, human rights and sustainable development go hand in hand. Therefore, when planning implementation, governments need to take an intersectoral approach, ensuring departments responsible for fisheries, environment, decent and fair working conditions, as well as basic needs such as health, housing, social development, all work together. Governments also need to collaborate on all levels, from the local level to national, regional and international. They need to consider the key principles in the guidelines and how they can promote fishers' rights at sea, at the landing site, in communities and through overall laws and policies. Fishing communities need secure access to land and to the waters where they fish. They depend on ecosystems that link life on land to aquatic life. When planning coastal development, governments need to respect customary tenure rights and ensure that land and aquatic ecosystems remain healthy and able to sustain these livelihoods. Everyone needs to be involved in ensuring our sea's resources are used in a sustainable way. Management must ensure equitable participation of fishers, especially women, promoting co-management. Activities to prevent illegal fishing and promote conservation must be designed to fit the local areas they operate in. When making plans that involve fisher communities, activities all along the value chain need to be considered. This includes mending nets, preparing bait, harvesting different marine resources, as well as activities that add value, such as cleaning, smoking, packing, and marketing fish, or broader community benefit sharing, such as local tourism and conservation. The importance of women's work through the value chain must be recognized, and gender equality needs to become the norm in all activities, including the management of resources. Governments need to provide infrastructure and coordinate capacity building programs. They also need to work with fishers to develop innovative, low-cost information and communication technologies. These can enable small-scale fishers to capture and share their data, access information about markets and trade, control the value chain more effectively and promote traceability. This can help shift unequal power relations in the marketplace and strengthen accountability to their local cooperatives or associations. Small-scale fishing communities need access to information and technology that can promote safety at sea, document fishers' local knowledge and empower them to participate fully in monitoring, research and management processes. This can also strengthen their ability to respond to disaster risk and climate change in an adaptive way. In order for the principles of the guidelines to be achieved, implementation processes need to involve fishers at all stages. In this way, the guidelines enable small-scale fishers to ensure that their voices are heard and their human rights are recognized at all levels.